Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call to order this October 10th meeting of the Pierce County Council. The time is 3.02 p.m. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilmember Campbell. Here. Councilmember Kruver. Here. Councilmember Denson. Here. Councilmember Herrera. Here. Councilmember Hitchin. Here. Councilmember Morrell. Here. And Councilmember Mello. Here. There are six, seven members present, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Thank you. All seven members are present in a quorum. We're now at the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag and our land acknowledgement. Please join us in listening to the land acknowledgement and Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag, followed by a moment of silence dedicated to the violence in Israel. We acknowledge that we are the, on the traditional homelands of the Coast Salish tribes. Coast Salish people have lived on and stewarded these lands since time immemorial and continue to do so today. We recognize that this land acknowledgement is just one small step toward true allyship, and we commit to uplifting the voices, experiences, and histories of the indigenous people of this land. I'd like to invite all who are able to stand to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag and remain standing for a moment of silence for the violence in Israel. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're now at section four, approval of our agenda. Are there any objections to approving today's agenda as presented? Seeing no objection, the agenda is approved. On today's council agenda, there will be multiple opportunities for public comment. On the consent agenda, you may provide comment on any final action item. This does not include items placed on the consent agenda for scheduling and introduction. On today's consent agenda, there are two appointment resolutions for final hearing and one grant approval. Under section nine of the agenda, we will take public comment on the proposed ordinance number 2023-39. And then under community forum, there will be an opportunity to address the council on any topic that is not on today's agenda. That brings us to section five, our consent agenda. We do have a consent agenda before us. Does any member wish to pull any item from the consent agenda for further discussion? Vice Chair Campbell. Uh, if I could check on some names here to see what we have in the room or online. Anyone last name Camel, uh, Larry Nelson, Rankos, or Tiffany Wagner? Anyone not seeing any of those, then I will move. We do have uh, for 2A, uh, I would move. Uh, section 2A to Section 7 of the agenda and adopt the consent agenda as amended. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that we adopt the consent agenda with the exception of moving item 2A to resolutions under our agenda. We'll move to a public hearing on the final action items of the consent agenda. Is there anyone in chambers wishing to provide public comment on the final action items on today's consent agenda? We'll start in chambers. We'll ask you to come to the podium. We're just on the consent agenda. There's an appointment and a grant for a fish passage barrier. Not seeing any. Mr. Winesbury, anybody in the Zoom room? For any members of the public who wish to provide comment on the following action, press the raise hand icon at Zoom or star nine on your telephone keypad. There are no hands at this time, Chair. Thank you. We'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the council. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll on the consent agenda? Councilmember Cooper. Aye. Councilmember Denson. Aye. Councilmember Herrera. Aye. Councilmember Hitchin. Aye. Councilmember Morrell. Aye. Councilmember Campbell. Aye. And Councilmember Mello. Aye. The result of the roll call. 
vote is seven ayes and zero nays. On a vote of seven ayes and zero nays, the consent agenda is adopted. We are now at section six of our agenda, which is messages from the executive judges or the prosecuting attorney. Um, we have a few messages from the executive today. The first message is a message from the executive transmitting the following ordinance, which was vetoed on October 9th, 2023. And that was ordinance number 2023-36, which was an ordinance of the Pierce County Council adopting a new chapter uh, to establish the Commission on Equity. The second message from the executive transmitted the following ordinances, which were approved and signed into law on October 9th, 2023. The first was um, a, a non-exclusive franchise agreement with Mox Networks for a wireline system uh, in, in Pierce County. Uh, he also signed 2023-37, which was a uh, ordinance of the County Council amending our biennial budget um, and making uh, additional supplemental budget investments this biennium. He signed 2023-40, which was an ordinance of the Pierce County Council relating to the Pierce Conservation District um, to uh, uh, allow um, the city of Edgewood to be incorporated into the Conservation District Service Territory. He signed ordinance number 42S, which was an ordinance of the Pierce County Council modifying the effective date um, of previous ordinances that we um, uh, 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 repealed um, uh, related to uh, shared housing villages in certain areas of Pierce County. Those were the bills that the executive vetoed and signed. That does bring us to section seven, proclamations, recognitions, and awards. Um, we have a proclamation uh, today proclaiming Saturday October 14th, 2023 as Puget Sound Orca Recovery Day. And I'd like to invite Dana Coggan, Executive Director of the Pierce Conservation District, and Gracie DeMeo, um, the Communications and Community Engagement Manager for the Conservation District. Um, we'd like to invite you to the podium as we read this proclamation into the record. Welcome to you both. So this is a proclamation of the Pierce County Council proclaiming Saturday, October 14th, 2023 as Puget Sound Orca Recovery Day in Pierce County, Washington. Uh, whereas the majestic Southern resident killer whales known as the Southern residents grace the waters of Washington state and the Pacific Northwest, embodying the spirit of our region and captivating hearts worldwide. And whereas these awe inspiring creatures once thriving now face critical endangerment with their population dwindling to 74 marking a distressing decline that threatens the very essence of our marine ecosystems. And where is the tragic plight of Southern residents epitomized by the heart-wrenching journey of Taliqua, who carried her deceased calf for 17 days, underscores the urgency to restore the balance of our oceans and safeguard the future of these magnificent beings. And whereas on March 28, 2023, the Pierce County Council recognized that the Southern resident orcas have inherent rights, including the right to life, autonomy, culture, free and safe passage, adequate food supply from naturally occurring, occurring sources, and freedom from conditions causing physical, emotional, and mental harm, including a habitat that is not degraded by noise, pollution, and contamination. And whereas the survival of the Southern residents hinges on the availability of their primary food source, the endangered Chinook salmon, whose own struggle for existence is intensified by habitat loss, climate change, and pollution. And whereas Pierce County, along with its many partners, such as the federal government, our tribal and state partners, and other local governments and nonprofit organizations, are committed to salmon recovery by strategically removing barriers to fish passage that allow salmon to move freely and the restoration of degraded habitat and whereas the Pierce Conservation District, among other Puget Sound conservation districts, recognizes the pivotal role it plays in orchestrating events to improve water quality and habitat restoration, including a collaborative effort towards sustaining the delicate marine ecosystem that supports our Southern residents. 
And whereas the, vital the vitality of our marine environment is interwoven with the daily choices we make as individuals, as humans, and our commitment to cultivating an understanding of our impact on the Puget Sound, now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Pierce County Council on this 10th day of October 2023, that Saturday, October 14th, 2023, is Puget Sound Orca Recovery Day in Pierce County, Washington. And we encourage all residents of Pierce County and beyond to unite with the Pierce Conservation District to engage in vital restoration projects across our region. And for more information on how you can contribute, we ask you to visit www.betterground.org. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Ms. Coggin, we'd welcome some remarks. All right. Well, thank you, Chair Mello and rest of the council. I appreciate being back here and also on a day that you just passed a piece of fish barrier removal also. Orcas are not just something out there, but orca recovery has to do with everything we do every single day. This one day is the pro proclaimed day to actually think about the orcas. And when I thought about what I was going to say today, I really thought deeply about the Salish people as we are sitting here as the day after Indigenous Peoples Day. The Salish people believe that the orcas are the souls of the chiefs and are the souls of the elders. And I think about those souls of the elders and what we can do as a community to continue to create safe space and allow for habitat restoration so that the salmon can thrive and that the salmon can then be eaten by the orcas. <laughs> so, you know, we, we kind of have a little bit of joking there, but um, I also thought a lot about uh, Tokate today. Tokate is the orca that was captured here in the Pacific Northwest and taken away from its home, its family. And we know that orcas are actually one of the many creatures that create very deep familial bonds. Just as we saw with what inspired Orca Recovery Day was the one mother who carried her baby in mourning. We mourn today too for Tokate. We mourn that we have an opportunity as a community to change what we do. I wanna thank you all for taking the time to have us here. Um, I know that the work that the conservation does, conservation district does, is very critical to salmon habitat and to then therefore the orca recovery plan. We know that this iconic creature, which is part of our community, is one that we want to continue to help in every way that we can. So this Saturday, I encourage each of you to come out and do something with one of our community groups. And if you can't make it out this Saturday, you can also come out to many of our other events throughout the year and volunteer to either plant trees and pull weeds. And how does that connect with the orca? Well, it creates a healthy community. We know that our healthy lands create healthy ecosystems and that those healthy ecosystems also create healthy people and a healthy sound. And along with that, a healthy sound creates a healthy economy for our region. So it really does connect with everything. Um, and just as a side note, if you can't tell, I am actually wearing an orca tie today. <laughs> so tying community together with the opportunity to save just little pieces of the sound. I'm gonna pass it over to Gracie to say a few words too. Um. Thank you so much for having us today. Um, Orca Recovery Day is such a special event that this county gets to host. Um, I have been really honored being the communications manager at the district, being able to actually talk with the public about this event and to hear what they think about it. And I wanted to share just a little story because um, I think it conveys the importance uh, of this day, which is that um, I was talking to someone at a local festival and they said, you know, what's Orca Recovery Day? I gave them this whole spiel. I pointed them towards this beautiful proclamation. And eventually uh, in the conversation, this person said, oh, it's like, what do I want the sound to look like? Like, you're asking me, what do I want to see in the future? And I think that's like, that's it. <laughs> um, the question that we're asking with this event is, do you want people who are coming after us to know about orcas? 
Do you want to be able to boast about the water that we have here? Do you want to be able to point to plants and say, I planted those, that was me. Um, I think that's really what the day is about and what makes it so special. Um, and just like Dana, I really encourage you, if you are hearing about this event for the first time or it's the uh, seventh time that you're hearing about it or the 70th, um, I would encourage you to come out to the events, see what it is actually like this year, see what it's going to be like next year, and know that you are a part of a regional effort, that it's not something that's just happening in Pierce County. It's very special to this place, but that it's happening all over Puget Sound. So it's a larger effort and you can be part of it. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for being with us. So you already shared some of, if we went to betterground.org, or here at home, the, the Pierce Conservation District website, some of the Orca Day activities are volunteer activities throughout the county, really throughout Puget Sound, but for us here at home, throughout the county. So these are places where we, we would be put to work planting trees or taking out invasive species. I, I think I also saw there's a 5K run walk. There is. This is the first year that we are implementing a 5K run just to connect people with uh, some educational events too. So along the run, there'll be little placards that talk about the salmon. We will not be chasing anyone or asking <laughs> them to be a salmon and somebody be an orca, but I will share if you show up one of the two of us might be an orca costume, and she's not gonna be there, so I'm just saying it may be me. <laughs> so we are doing the event that will actually help educate community members about the importance of salmon to the orca, and then also events, like you said, Council Member Mello or Chair Mello, um, there will be plenty of opportunities to get your hands dirty. Um, we have six events that are listed just for our region, and there's also another fantastic day I'm gonna give Tacoma Green Days a little plug too because that's on the exact same day and we will be partnering with them for some of our events too. So we're gonna try not to take any of their volunteers but we're all gonna come together on that one epic day to actually do a lot of good for our community. That's great. And I would also mention that if you aren't able to make it out to the events, we do also have information about actions you can take at home. If the events are, for whatever reason, not accessible to you, um, we have lists that anyone can do. Um, we're really encouraging people to take a look at your feet and know that that is where Orca Recovery starts. It can be anywhere in the county, any accessibility level. Um, we all have a role to play, no matter how small exactly. or big. Awesome. Um, let me open it up to other remarks by other council members. Councilmember Hitchin. Thank you, Chair. Um, former biology teacher, so just had to um, acknowledge and thank the, the work of, of bringing education as part of this work. Um, I think any time that we can get people to get out into nature and get their hands dirty, literally in some of these cases, or a little bit of exercise, and learn a little bit about the connectivity that, that connects us to the sound and the waters and the animals and the air um, is really important. So it's one of the reasons I really enjoy some of these proclamations as they come through, because it allows us to just give a little bit of reminder, a little education around the why um, we need to take time as human beings and pause and think about the impacts that we have on our on our ecosystem so appreciate that and the work that you're doing and I look forward to the pictures Miss Coggin <laughs> thank you chair thank you Councilor Hitchin Vice Chair Campbell <clears throat> thank you um, I, I love our orca but I really like the idea of working to save the salmon to help feed them with enough that we can have some so because I do love salmon and so really when I look at saving the orca really is the barometer of how much salmon I can eat if there's enough for to feed them and us so uh, I see it as uh, it's really about the ecosystem that supports us and makes us uniquely Northwest um, so it's uh, thank you for your work on this thank you Vice Chair Campbell um, and I just want to uh, build on that in, in closing, as Vice Chair Campbell somewhat, joking, somewhat jokingly uh, alludes to, the salmon and the orca really are the canary in the coal mine, right? The proverbial canary in the coal mine. Well, the salmon in the water. Um, <laughs> the salmon in the water. Uh, if, um, if, if they're healthy, it means the rest of the ecosystem is healthy. When they're endangered, like they are today, it means we have real serious concerns about habitat um, function, uh, habitat availability, water quality. Um, it, it really is um, the canary in the coal mine. And 
uh, is a real indicator about uh, the health of Puget Sound, right? That we might look out these windows and see a very picturesque, beautiful place, which it largely is when you look at the surface. But if you get under the surface, it's sick. Um, and there's a reason why um, salmon, many different species of salmon are endangered and the orca are critically endangered. Um, it tells us something about the health of the waters and the health of Puget Sound. Um, which has a direct tie to the health of our economy because so much of it is tied to fishing and aquaculture and recreation. So it, it is all, all incredibly connected. And one of the many reasons I love the Conservation District is you help take these really big, overwhelming issues and help us um, make really tangible local progress on them and giving us opportunities to get our hands dirty because what, it's, it's fun to watch people. If I get to be in South Prairie this weekend planting trees on South, in South Prairie Creek Preserve and you know South Prairie is one of the best spawning grounds for Chinook salmon and pink salmon. So, so right, so like when, when people get to make that connection between habitat in South Prairie and what orca eat, um, it is, it's so much fun for people to be able to make that connection um, in, in their brains. So um, really critical work. Thank you for the work that you do. I do encourage people to go to betterground.org betterground to get the full list of, of events um, about what you can do uh, this, this weekend for Orca Recovery Day uh, and beyond. So we'd encourage you to, uh, do you have some, uh, something in closing? I, I just wanted to say thank you very much because we stand on your shoulders for the work that you did out at South Prairie. So thank you. It's a cool, it's a cool site. <laughs> we'd invite you up here to take a photo with us so we can help spread the word um, about Orca Recovery Day. So come on up, please. We are, um, if there's no objection, I'd like to come back to the item we uh, removed from the consent agenda so that we can hear from the appointee. So, Councilmember Hitchin, um, for a motion on resolution 2023-147. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to move R2023-145. Thank, thank you, thank you for catching that. It's been properly moved and seconded that we adopt proposal R2023-145 people are paying attention today. Madam Clerk, will you please read the town to the record? Proposal number R-2023-145, a resolution of the Pierce County Council confirming the appointment of one new member, Jan Kalaski, to the Anderson Island Citizens Advisory Board. Thank you. Thank you. Jan, thank you for making time to be with us today. Thank you for your willingness to serve. We'd love for you to briefly introduce yourself and share why you wish to serve. You're on mute.
Mr. Weinsbury, are you able to unmute? There we go. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, well, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just briefly, uh, I was born and raised in, uh, in Anchorage. Uh, started my uh, transportation uh, career uh, in Anchorage. Uh, had lots of opportunities to move around the world. Spent some time in uh, in the UK, uh, responsible for that business, uh, as well as uh, spending three years at uh, the World Trade Center, uh, number one when there was one. Um, and then uh, came back to uh, uh, to the Pacific Northwest. Lived in Bellevue for uh, 30 years. And uh, my wife and I decided that we wanted to move to Anderson Island, have a home built. And we did that. That was five and a half years ago. So I'm almost at the end of my full time tenure uh, professionally. And so I felt with the extra time that I would have that this might be an uh, ideal opportunity to give back. And so uh, I'm excited to have an opportunity to uh, to work with uh, everybody on Anderson Island, uh, as well as uh, as you folks. Well, thank you again for your willingness to serve um, and for being here. Are there questions for Jan before we open this up for a public hearing? I'm not seeing any. Allow us this uh, procedural um, step here. Any member of the public wish to provide comment on uh, this appointment to the Anderson Island Citizen Advisory Committee? Please come to the podium. State your name for the record. Anybody in chambers? Not seeing anybody. Mr. Weinsberry, anybody in the Zoom room on this appointment? Yes. For any member of the public wishing to provide comment on proposal number 2023-145, press the raise hand icon at Zoom or star 9 on your telephone keypad. See no hands at this time, Chair. See no hands. We'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the council. Are there final comments by council members? Council member Hitchin. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to take a moment to thank you first for hanging out at the beginning of the meeting. It could be a little confusing. And then second, for um, stepping up to do this volunteer work. I look forward to meeting you virtually uh, the next couple of months as we're working through things and in the future, hopefully on per uh, in person. But thank you for stepping up and filling a vacancy on the board. Thank you. Thank you. At our gratitude, again, it takes... Um, committed community members who are interested in their community to give of their talent and passion and time to advise uh, the county in so many different ways. We have over 40 boards and commissions, and we take your recommendations and thoughts incredibly seriously. And having real people like you involved in community and local governance um, is how we make this thing called democracy work. So thank you so much for giving of your time. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll on resolution 2023-145? Yes, sir. Councilmember Denson. Aye. Councilmember Herrera. Aye. Councilmember Hitchin. Aye. Councilmember Morrell. Aye. Councilmember Campbell. Aye. Councilmember Kruver. Aye. And Councilmember Mello. Aye. The result of the roll call vote is seven ayes and zero nays. On a vote of seven ayes and zero nays, the resolution is adopted. Thank you, Jan. We are now at section eight ordinances. We now have proposal number 2023-39 before us. Council member Hitchin for a motion. Chair, I'd like to move 2023-39. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that we adopt proposal 2023-39. Madam Clerk, will you please read the title into the record? Proposal number 2023-39, excuse me. An ordinance of the Pierce County Council relating to Title III of the Pierce County Code, Personnel, and many chapters 3.08 definitions. Last line, please. The last line is for career service to incorporate changes authorized by this ordinance. Thank you. Ms. Long to brief the council. Thank you and good afternoon. Uh, this proposal amends uh, Title III as stated um, by the clerk. It's entitled Personnel um, in a variety of different ways. Um, it adds a new chapter 3.18 to the county code entitled diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, it uh, adds language throughout the chapter to clarify and updates uh, various terminology. So we'll start with the new chapter that is um, on page 10 of exhibit A uh, in your packets. Uh, this is the new diversity, equity, inclusion chapter. Uh, it also amends Title 3.08 to define those terms. 
Uh, the new chapter sets forth the county's policy enumerating the responsibilities of all county employees, departments, and officials, and it describes the consequences of nonconformance. Another change that you'll see throughout your Exhibit A is um, changing the gender-specific terms throughout uh, with gender-neutral terms. And then I guess I'd classify the last set as more miscellaneous. So these are updating language and terminology for clarification and consistency with current practices. Uh, for example, uh, you'll see the term mailing and served by certified males. These are replaced with or augmented by the terms email and sending or similar terminology. It replaces the term pay period with pay cycle. Uh, in um, the term annual leave in the context of vacation carryover is replaced with vacation leave. In Chapter 3.14, which is the whistleblower protection chapter, uh, it includes an updated definition of uh, the term retaliatory action, and it uh, adds a time period of one year within which a complaint must be submitted. In Chapter 3.15, entitled Workplace Safety and Violence Protection, uh, it adds language to provide flexibility to the HR director to designate positions to which safety concerns are reported. In Chapter 3.32, which is entitled Classification Plan, it adds language to clarify that positions will be classified not only by described duties, but also by internal equity and external market measures. In Chapter 3.69, which is entitled Humanitarian Catastrophic Leave, it clarifies the criteria for approving that leave and also the positions authorized to review and approve that leave. In Section 3.76.030, this is bereavement leave, it expands the purpose of using that leave to include grieving the loss of a family member, and this will be in addition to attending a funeral or to complete burial arrangements. And then finally, in Chapter 3.98, entitled Domestic Partner Benefits, it revises the definition of employee benefits by striking health insurance and replacing with dental insurance. This proposal was heard in the Rules and Operations Committee meeting on September 25th and received a due pass recommendation. We'll note that there are six amendments today. And I see that um, Judy Archer and Lisa Hillegas from the Human Resources Department are also available um, in Zoom to answer any questions that the council might have. Thank you, Ms. Long. Uh, Director Archer, we'd love to hear from you. This is um, executive request and human resources request legislation that we're hearing today that's moved through the committee process. And uh, uh, we'd love to hear your comments and specifically uh, you know we've received quite a bit of communication about this. I think there's some confusion about what this bill does and does not do, and I'd like you to please address head-on. I know you've seen some of that communication. I'd like you to address head-on what this bill does and does not do to the personnel policies. So thank you for being with us. Thank you. Just making a quick note here. Um, I am Judy Archer. I'm the Human Resources Director for Pierce County. Human Resources has brought forward a refresh of a portion of the administrative guidelines for your review and approval. I'd like to make a few opening remarks, and then I'll pass this over to Lisa Hillegas, Assistant Director of Human Resources, to walk through the proposed changes in more detail. Human Resources reviews the administrative guidelines on a regular cycle. They are updated to reflect changes in laws, case law, and for clarity. This package is a product of the most recent proposed changes. A DEI policy was called for by the council in resolution R2021-109. The executive requested HR to complete this work. A draft was developed, reviewed by the 70 plus members of the county's DEI work groups, the prosecuting attorney's office, the executive, all directors and electeds, and also the equity review committee. Comments were reviewed and incorporated into the document. This document was bargained with our labor partners on behalf of our 21 bargaining units. The document we bring before you today is a result of these individual voices. I would note that among the comments was 
in this perception that this would require people to use they and them as pronouns in their conversations, and that is not the case. It is merely changing to a more gender neutral term. We in English, when we speak, if we do not know the gender of who we are referring to, use they and use they, we do not use he, she um, in normal conversational English. So this is just changing it to that. It is not mandating anybody in any way on how they communicate. While growing up in the Midwest, my parents taught me to respect everyone, regardless of their race, economic status, or their livelihood. I've tried to live that way in my life as well. And when an organization wants to create a cultural, culture of mutual respect, it is referred to as inclusion. The DEI policy that is brought before you today is designed to reinforce a culture of respect here at the county. Respect for each individual coworker and respect for all members of the public as they interact with the county. This policy is not about special treatment or lowering standards. We have high standards here at the county for our hiring and promotional activities and utilize a meritorious process in the recruitment that we do. We strive at the county to hire the best. We embrace the executive's values of hiring talented and diverse employees. We strive to have a workforce that reflects the community we serve. We do this work by reaching out into the community, making people aware of the excellent work that is done by Pierce County employees, and that Pierce County welcomes everyone to come and be a part of this team. This DEI policy reinforces these practices, and I'll now turn it over to Lisa. Good afternoon, Chair Mello and Council Members. Lisa Hilligas, Assistant Director of HR. Um, so while the vast majority of the changes to the Pierce County Administrative Guidelines that you have before you are housekeeping in nature, um, I just wanted to provide some highlights that you've um, already heard. So we did update them to the guidelines to gender, in gender inclusive language. We updated the notice requirement to reflect modern modes of communication by adding email with confirmation of receipt where it was appropriate. Um, we did update the chapter 3.14 whistleblower policy to conform with state law. We created the new chapter 3.18 diversity, equity and inclusion policy, which also includes the definitions for diversity, equity and inclusion in chapter 3.0. Zero 08, and we updated the um, bereavement leave to include grieving the loss of a family member as a reason for using bereavement leave. These amendments have been bargained with our labor partners, um, and Director Archer and I are here to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you both for being with us and for adding to the briefing about what this is and what this is not. Um, let's see if there's questions from council members before we consider amendments, so just so the public can follow along on our process, um, I'm gonna soon call for questions by council members now of what we heard so far. We'll consider six amendments that are before us for consideration. Then we'll open this up for a public hearing, and then we'll bring it back to the council for final deliberation. So I'm opening it up to council for questions about what we've heard so far. Councilmember Kruver. Thank, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Director and Ms. Hillegas. I'm, I'm wondering, so we have been working on DEI programs and trainings for quite some time, and I believe I had seen in one of the, the uh, line items that you would have the responsibility of creating programs for DEI. So is it correct to assume that that will be expanded on on what you will be putting together? No, I would not say there's an expansion. Um, we are, have an ongoing effort to include DEI related trainings in the trainings that we offer and we will continue to do that, but not an expansion of the quantity of what we're offering. Okay, I'm just, things are going through my mind. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilmember Herrera. Thank you, Chair, I just had a question on um, if this doesn't pass, does it change anything when it comes to bargaining or, or if uh, we talk about sure. amendments? Yeah. Okay, the microphone is working. Sorry, yeah. yeah. And I know we haven't gotten into the amendments. If 
how that would affect any type of bargaining that's already happened uh, along those. Dr. Archer. When changes are made, um, frequently we have to go back and re-bargain it um, because it is not what our labor partners have agreed to. Um, so for the most part, I would expect that there would at a minimum be a review, but anything that has to do with the terms and conditions of employment, which includes expectations of how their work is performed would have to be re-bargained. Thank you, Thank, you. Thank you for the question. Councilmember Morrell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, to follow up on another li uh, line of thinking, in, in looking through this within the uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, the new section, we aren't cr creating any type of protected class or group of people, are we? No, we are not. So intentionally, the definitions are very broad for exactly that reason, to show that this is not about choosing one or two groups that are to be treated differently than everyone else. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I don't see any other questions at this time. Um, thank you, Director. Archer, Ms. Holigos, um, ask you to stay around in the event uh, questions come up for the rest of this, uh, the amendments or the hearing, please. Thank you for making yourself available. We have uh, Council Amendment Number One before us. Ask uh, Council Member Vice Chair Campbell for a motion for Council Amendment Number One. Thank you, Chair. I move uh, Council Amendment Number One to Proposal 2023-39. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that we adopt Council Amendment Number One. Ms. Long. Thank you. So this amendment uh, it was brought to our attention by the department. It is purely a technical amendment. Um, and there are a number of instances throughout the proposal. You'll see in the title um, and in a couple of the recitals in section two and in one instance in exhibit A that reference the uh, administrative guidelines for career service. Now these are the guidelines that are promulgated by the HR director uh, to implement uh, Title III, basically. Uh, in, recently, they have changed the name to simply the administrative guidelines, and so those instances that I just mentioned will all strike for career service and leave it administrative guidelines. So that it applies to all employees, whether you're career service or limited duration or a temporary hire, th this makes clear that these administrative guidelines ap apply to all employees of Pierce County, no matter your designation. Thank you. We had some, thank you, Ms. Long. We, we had um, we had more discussion at our study session to make sure we understand this. Are there any questions about council amendment number one? I'm not seeing any. We'll take a voice vote on the adoption of council amendment number one. All those in favor of adopting council amendment number one, please say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The motion is adopted. That brings us to Council Amendment Number Two. Council Member Kruver to move the motion. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to move Amendment Number Two to 2023-39. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that we adopt Council Amendment Number Two. Ms. Long. Thank you. So this uh, would add some language to uh, the section of the code uh, relating to uh, bereavement leave. It begins on page 19 of your Exhibit A. Um, Currently, the code allows for um, the use of bereavement leave up to 14 calendar days prior to or up to 30 calendar, calendar days after the death of an eligible family member at the employee's option or when authorized for a different time frame by the human resources director due to extenuating circumstances. Amendment number two would add following extenuating circumstances an example of what might be considered by the director when making that decision. And the words would be such as when a funeral or memorial services are planned for more than 30 days after the death. An example of what might be an extenuating circumstance. 
there could be other extenuating circumstances that the director could interpret Absolutely. and grant, but we, this amendment gives clarity about what we mean by an extenuating circumstance. Councilmember Kruver, to further speak to your thank, thank you, Chair. This just comes from an experience when my mother died and they could not, we did not have our services planned until the following year. And I was told I could not take advantage of or use the bereavement pay there. And I saw this come up and found it an opportunity. With three days here or three days, six months from there, it makes no difference. But it was um, frustrating, I must say. So I've brought this forward. Thank you for bringing it Thank forward. You. Councilmember Morrell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate Councilmember Kruver for bringing this forward. Um, through a life experience that she uh, was part of. And uh, I, I think it makes sense, and it's, uh, I think, a good amendment that I'll support. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Chair Campbell. This is often a way that uh, good policies bring forward if someone goes through something that was unpleasant and uh, they realize that given the opportunity, no one else should have to go through what they did. And so I uh, really appreciate you uh, sharing your story and using your experience to bring this forward. Thank you. Thank you. I, too, ask for a yes vote um, on this. Thank you for bringing up this um, example so we can make clear what the legislative intent is here. The vote is on adoption of Council Amendment Number 2. All those in favor of adopting Council Member Amendment Number 2, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The motion is adopted. That brings us to Council Amendment Number 3. Council Member Kruver to move the amendment. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to move Amendment 3 to 2023-39. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that we adopt Council Amendment Number 3. Ms. Long to brief the Council. Thank you. Amendment number three would make some changes to the proposed new chapter 318, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. It would strike all language under the current 010 policy and all the language under 020 entitled responsibilities and replace with new language as you see on amendment number three. The proposed new uh, policy language would read as follows. Pierce County is dedicated to maintaining a professional work environment that attracts and welcomes diverse talents and backgrounds, as well as maintaining a code of ethics that ensures, inspires excellence in the delivery of its services. Pierce County values the individuality and differences of its employees and will not require participation in work-related activities and trainings that employees consider to be offensive or contrary to their conscience, personal values, or beliefs. Uh, the Next section, responsibilities, would be revised uh, to contain the following language. Human resources responsibilities include, A, considering providing programs that are instructive in ways to ensure that the county does not discriminate. B, continuously reviewing new information and policy developments that can improve county systems. And C, making opportunities available for advancement within the county through providing optional training or educational courses. So those are the changes in exhibit. Ex Thank you. Councilmember Kruver. Councilmember Kruver to speak to your amendment. Yes, Chair. Um, I'll do my, yeah, my final. I, I just want to say when, when I read things and they have a lot of words attached, I, I see a lot of meaning. It's kind of like when ecology takes control or makes rules on a river, they start including all the tributaries. And I kind of looked at this as somewhat, here's the tributaries of, of the code. And, and, and the more times I would read it and then reread it, the more concerned I would become because the employer-employee relationship is voluntary and everyone wants that to be a, a good relationship. But I really have to wonder what we are asking for or setting up for a future mandate or for our current employees and future employees. It kind of makes me think of this omnibus funding package. Nearly every sentence here assumes something or claims some kind of authority that I don't believe we have authority to claim. It says, the county is dedicated to creating an inclusive work environment. 
So we know what, we don't know what that means or looks like, but we can find out what other governments, institutions, or organizations, or businesses are doing. It, it's similar to a, a body of work that shows a comparison of outcomes of, or of similar pol policies. And what I mean, do, am I, am, do we have other businesses that we have created what they do to have a comparison of what this could look like? And most likely, you know, that wasn't a requested action, so I doubt that other businesses and organizations were not researched. It says the county embraces and celebrates the unique experiences, perspectives, and cultural backgrounds. Okay, that is, to me, quite an emotional directive. And we don't possess the personal thoughts and actions of others. So what, what does it look like to embrace and celebrate? What am I, as an employee, supposed to be doing? And it says, Pierce County strives to foster an environment where employees feel respected, valued, and empowered. You know, good intentions are obvious. That's, that's not being debated. But what happens if there is one who doesn't feel respected or valued or empowered? You know, will a fellow employee be blamed or the supervisor and consequently get sued? It says all county employees are at the forefront of promoting and sustaining an inclusive workplace and helping to create more equitable outcomes in the community. How is that being defined? To me, it sounds like an expectation to participate in community activism. I mean, I've seen that where I went to a school to do some reading and the kids were at lunch and I see a, a, a lesson and it was the story of some kids going out in the woods and they see tr trash. And how awful is that? Yeah, that's not good. But the answer, the final was, what can you do to prevent that? And it's, I, I, that to me is starting to build activism. And, and I see, you know, that chapter 3.16, the EEOC um, writing is again emphasized. It's in both sections. It's emphasized over and over. And that is a list that to me is, is pointing out things as opposed to everyone. Now it's these people and everyone or these groups. And, and, it, and it's just redundant, I guess. And then I have to ask, maybe I should have asked this prior to Director Archer, but why was justice for all added? Now that tells me that there is a plan for a new commission for advising how to develop policies that will assure justice for all, because that's um, a common claim I hear a lot out in, in the field. And then regarding the section on responsibilities, is the county now projecting this ideology onto everyone it engages with? I'm concerned that we will be instructing businesses that they need to have DEI policies that align with ours or they won't be able to bid on projects. It's, it's hard enough to find employees, volunteers, and contractors. And I've, I've read where colleges, like for admission or for the professors, they have to write a DEI statement. And, and I'm seeing the policies expect employees to participate in training opportunities that are focused on DEI. That, that's a philosophy that we're focused a lot on. You know, and the taxpayer, I don't believe, should be paying for these. Private companies use their own money. The government should not be using taxpayer earnings for creating DEI-minded employees. And yesterday, I, I was asked about the trainings on, on the cultural history of the local tribes, if that should be eliminated. And I really thought about that. And at the end, I, I sat back and I'm like, I asked myself, was I changed? No, I wasn't changed. I was informed. I, I listened to some very good men and women talk about their stories. But at the end, I am still going to be respectful and treat the individuals I meet with the same way. You know, that's, that to me, that's equality. And I have heard at other meetings that the youth are looking for meaning in their work. And that's a subjective and personal responsibility to find. Attitudes have a lot to do with finding purpose. And there are millions of books that enrich minds and attitudes, which reminds me, I was listening to um, Jerry Coram speak, and he just wrote a book. And 
probably shouldn't plug this, but uh, it's the A to, Z, A to Z success in life. And I, I don't think it, it has a DEI in there. It has basics. And, it, and uh, I had a longtime friend who said he found the most meaning in life here volunteering at a homeless um, organization that finds homes from federal way. And, you know, life is a journey, and it's risky to think that the role of a business is to be responsible for someone's meaning or finding that meaning. And then this new section, I know, was written by many, many people and many uh, minds that were focused on an ideology that requires a psychological shift in the basics of the American culture. That's the way I am interpreting. Maybe others do not. But that's what I see, that's what I read, and that's how I'm, I'm stating that. And there, I'm finding hundreds, if not thousands, of toolkits and courses available that belong or you know, show where diversity, equity, inclusion ideology is going, which I expect the term belonging to be part of the added to the expectations from employees, because I'm sure this, as you update this and you look at what's going on or what's out in the field, that will most could possibly or very likely be into the code. And we don't really know what all that is yet. And, yet, and I look at this policy is not without risk and expense. We've got, um, yeah, I got them right here. What I'm looking at expenses, I'm seeing DEI trainings and programs, single instructor led trainings, 500 to 10,000, e learning modules, 200 to 5,000, keynote speakers, 1,000 to 30,000. And this is from the Nova Collective that I found that. We have, um, Trainings that have happened here, I'm looking in the last couple of years, oh, 50, 75, over 75,000, and that, um, that doesn't include the dollars that were spent when the initiative first began. And when I was looking at uh, trying to find out where the reports were that said that organizations who employ DEI fare far better than those who don't. And there was the Boston Consulting Group, and then there was the Center for American Progress that I found that related to those things. And I, uh, I, I, I'm not finding Centers for American Progress to be particularly reliable, and I don't know a lot about the Boston Consulting Group yet, but they have um, the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging Certificate Program. You can enroll October 17. And so there are many things to choose from that I anticipate that um, could be looked at for the county. I'm just applying precautionary principles. So we are not without a lot of expenses with that. And as I look at what is going on around the world, I have to register some concerns in uh, investing in this because the DEI is a multi-billion dollar business. And I reflect on what a licensed psychiatrist told me, I mentioned before, whom I did ask to testify, but he will not because he is wanting to go into retirement and wants to protect his license. He says, do what you can to oppose the intrusion of activists promoting gender ideology and DEI dogma that is anti-individualism and pro-group identity, and that is a licensed psychologist or psychiatrist. And I listened to a former DEI trainer. It was a very interesting um, interview. And he said, if you keep the narrative going, you'll always have a business getting rid of it. And he said it made people less likely to interact and microaggressions abound. Asking what you do is considered an aggression. He said equity means equality of outcome. And this, the interview, um, I'm happy to share the information if someone, anyone is interested. So in summary, Chair, I am asking for support on this. I, I believe that my amendment does make for a better framework to build on. It is very simple, understandable, and all of the desires can be applied from the language that I have. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry for not stating it um, earlier. Um, thank you, Councilmember Kruver. Um, 
but uh, I should have stated this at the beginning of, of our discussion uh, on this. Um, I'll only be calling on speakers uh, once, council members, to speak on amendments once and on final passage once, unless a member has a question of another colleague, then I'll allow them to be called on and speak again. But I'll only be calling on speakers once for the debate on each amendment and once only for final passage. Are there other, other remarks on council amendment number three? I'll just uh, um, ask for a, a no vote. Um, I believe Director Archer explained the uh, very lengthy and thoughtful work that's been going on since 2021 with multiple stakeholders, including the executive's office, um, the internal working DEI working group here at the county made up of uh, different staff groups, our equity review committee, bargaining units, including uh, represented employees of the many, many bargaining units that work here at Pierce County. And the work in front of us is uh, the product of that work of an over two year long process. And I think the, the work in front of us from the department is thoughtful, um, well thought out, um, and, uh, and ready for our consideration. And so I don't think amending the policy uh, at this time as constructed by those many hands who had a say in it is appropriate. I think the underlying proposal is uh, thoughtful and the right policy for uh, the county at this time. We'll take a voice vote on Council Amendment number three. All those in favor of adopting Council Amendment number three, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. 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 By my ear, the amendment is not adopted. <clears throat> that brings us to Council Amendment number four. Council Member Kruver for a motion. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to move Amendment number four for 2023-39. Been properly moved and seconded that we adopt Council Amendment Number Four. Council, uh, Ms. Long. Thank you. Amendment Number Four would uh, make changes in all the pages and lines um, that you see listed here to restore the gender-specific pronouns throughout. Thank you, Councilmember Kruver, to speak to your amendment. Thank you, Chair. I did want to ask, if I may, is, I'm assuming this is on the final statements or if anyone else wanted to say anything, or because you're not doing public testimony, correct? I, I won't take public testimony on amendments. We will take public testimony um, after we consider appointment uh, amendments. We'll take public test. We'll open this up for a public hearing and take public testimony then. Correct. I just didn't know if anyone else wanted to say anything before I continue. Yeah. yeah. What you got? You we're, 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 during, we're considering amendments by council members. So, Councilman Recruiter, to introduce your amendment. Correct. So, I'm. So, is this the one time to speak, or, or? You'll have one time to to make your remarks about council amendment. Okay, that's what I was thinking because I didn't know if anyone else wanted to push the button first. I don't see any at this time. Okay. Then I shall continue. Thank you. So, this amendment that I have it comes from a standpoint for me of common sense and a necessity, and I believe I reflect my district that we be able to communicate with clarity and accuracy and considering concepts most, most not likely considered. While I have been informed of an AP style modernization, I, I, I see the change sought as evolving with society to be politically correct. Rewriting code, replacing proper grammar with gender neutral terms, AP style, however you want to put that, still serves no higher purpose for the people of this county. I'm of the assumption that since using pronouns is considered by some as a sign of respect and welcoming, it will be mandated for all employees to go along with wording. This is kind of a start to maybe adjust folks into trying to read that kind of uh, language. You know, the cause for this policy, as I understand, is for the county to be viewed as being inclusive or sensitive to certain individuals, groups, or communities, and it would allow the county to fulfill a desired mandate or goal to be considered inclusive and welcoming for those who present as non-binary and it will still help that person to feel welcomed, respected and included by seeing that code. You know, no one consulted the folks in my district about the changes. They too are a group. I understand you went through a process and this started a few years ago. DEI has evolved immensely you know, 
on our radar since uh, 2021, and I believe working at well 2018 was when we were first discussing DEI. So if, if changing code to gender neutral terms is all that is needed to make someone feel welcome or want to apply for a job at the county, then why are taxpayers spending billions of dollars across the country to further change the culture through DEI policies? The state place replaced proper grammar years ago. Apparently that, that wasn't enough. So I have to ask, will this code create a new right like it says on the web? I found, alternatively, they, them is gender neutral or non-binary. Gender pronouns in the workplace and in other areas of life help people feel comfortable and respected. It is our right as human beings to feel this way, so using proper pronouns is a crucial part of building respectful relationships. And it is a person's right to feel that way, but that right ends there. They don't have a right to force someone else to use pronouns. I understand this isn't making the mandate, but I believe it is setting up for future times. So then I go, I, I Googled, is it illegal to refuse pronouns? For example, refusal to use a transgender employee's name, pronouns, or title may constitute unlawful gender-based harassment. Comments, unwanted touching, gestures, jokes, or pictures that target a person based on gender constitute gender-based harassment. So why is not harassment to those who want to mind their own business but are then being told to change attitudes and behaviors to accommodate some rules to make someone else comfortable? Just everyone can be nice. You know, I do not believe the council has the kind of authority over our employees that these ideas generate. I hope I'm wrong. But I've listened to those in the teaching professions lament how a child can usurp his or her authority and right of conscience. We're creating little narcissists in school when they can say to the teacher, you will call me this way or I'm going to tell on you. So we're dismissing the painstaking work done by Noah Webster and doggone it, I forgot his his dictionary. He, he knew that the way to undermine the Constitution was to redefine the meaning of its words. And although this policy is stated to be a utilitarian update, it's a step to evolving again. There are things in life that do not warrant this kind of attention, and this is one. Could we please focus on issues that are directed by our constituents, the crime, the congestion, and the out-of-control housing costs? It, it just this is something not necessary, and I ask support for the amendment. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Vice Chair Campbell. Thank you, Chair. Uh, as I looked into this amendment, what it is and what it's not, what it's not is a local manifestation of a national culture war. What it is is an update to our code. Uh, were we able to bring up something on the screen uh, page out of the underlying amendment so we can take a look at what's being changed here? And maybe zoom in on some of that because it's a little hard to read. Um, what it's doing throughout and uh, is changing everywhere where it says uh, he or she or his or her to they or them or their. What it's not doing is adding them as an additional pronoun. So if what Council Member Kruger was talking to of adding them into our thing, then instead of a strike here, you would have he, she, them. What you have is he, she, gone, and them in place of it as a singular pronoun. Now this is how we talk every day. If employees want to file a gr grievance, they are welcome to do that. It doesn't, I don't say if an employee wants to file a grievance, he or she may do that. We use the word they or them very often. As a matter of fact, it's natural. Yesterday, during conversations, we repeatedly refer to our employees as they's and them's because they're individuals. I looked it up with uh, Webster's Dictionary. They, in the singular, is used to refer to a person whose gender is not known or is not important in the context. The gender of our employees is not important in this context. It's who they are as the individual. And so when we change um, the line to contain uh, hearing officers shall conduct an investigation of the allegations contained herein as he or she deems or as they deem. Because it's not important what the gender of our hearing examiner is. 
and we don't need to focus on that. I got several emails saying that this was improper use of English. Yet, according to AP style book, Chicago style book, Grammarly, and every leading foundation of American grammar, they as a singular pronoun is very well accepted and encouraged. It is encouraged to the point to where most states, I shouldn't say most, several states have updated their state constitutions to be gender neutral, including uh, the states of Florida, Hawaii, New York, Rhode Island, and Utah. It's good enough for them. It should be good enough for us. It's good enough for the Constitution of the United States, where the word they is listed over 50 times. He is also in there almost 50 times. She is not. You don't want to ask me why that is. <laughs> uh, but it, uh, uh, I won't go into that. Um, so this is not an attempt to add or identify or force people to do anything. It is simply doing what every governance business and, and it, it's bringing it from legalese of he or she shall to they're going to do that. To how we speak in everyday parlance is how this matches, not a more complex version of making sure that we say he, she, or, or them. That's not part of this. So I just want to be clear what we're doing here is just a simple grammar update. Um, that's all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Campbell. Are there other remarks? I concur with Vice Chair Campbell. I apologize that there's been disinformation to cause a stir. We heard from the director about what this is and is not. Um, and uh, folks have been um, really concerned about something that uh, is not what is uh, being construed. So um, I, too, will ask for a no vote. Uh, we'll take a voice vote on, on Amendment Number 4. All those in favor of adopting Amendment 4, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. 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 The amendment is not adopted. We have Council Amendment Number 5 before us. Council Member Kruver for a motion. Thank you, Chair. I would like to move Amendment Number 5 for 2023-39. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that we adopt Council Amendment Number 5. Ms. Long. Thank you. Amendment number five would revise uh, the proposed new definitions of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And you'll see how they are currently written on page one of your exhibit A. Um, as proposed in amendment number five, uh, the word diversity um, as amended would read, diversity encompasses the range of similarities and differences an individual brings to the workplace. Equity would be revised to read, a workplace has equity when employees have access to learning and resources so that each employee can take advantage of career opportunities to succeed in the workplace. And finally, inclusion would be revised to read, an inclusive workplace recognizes that each individual brings different valuable skills and talents to the workplace that can be included for establishing and encouraging a welcoming atmosphere. Thank you. Remarks on Council Amendment Number Five, Councilmember Coover. Thank you, Chair. And on this, the purpose I was I was concerned with this is again I saw a lot of verbiage in here that I believe can lead to things that can cause issues for the county and stress on the employees. I, I'm just refining the defi defining the terms in the DEI in a reduced form to elicit the same outcome. So diversity, the, the statement is simple. It is, yeah, we encompass the range of similarities, similarities and differences. The rest that I am seeing here is, is a repetition of uh, section 3.16 in code. And it, it just kind of stood out to me that we kind of overdid that. Equity, let's see. The adverbs used are subjective and inflammatory. What the definition is saying to me is that if an employee isn't an activist for DEI, then equity won't exist and someone could be prevented from succeeding. That's how I was reading it. So it was simplified that the workplace has equity when employees have access to learning resources so that they all have a chance to succeed in the workplace. 
And for inclusion, again, I saw activism on the part of the employee being implied. It's telling employees that they will value that groups have more authority over the individual and that some sort of power is transferred to the employee to, part you know, to participate. And I, I just, those words were flagged to me when I read this as I look at all of the other things going on in the world under the DEI flag. So this is, uh, it's just not the role, I believe, of the county government to transfer social aspirations onto its employees through policies that promote a controversial and financially burdensome ideology. I would appreciate a yes vote. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Are there other remarks on Council Amendment number five? Councilmember Hitchin. Thank you, Chair. I just want to um, acknowledge and thank the department and the many, many people that came up with these definitions. Um, organizations struggle with this and work on this, and I feel like they um, did a, a really good job of pulling together something that can be hard work as we try and think better about how we work together as a community. When you talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, um, we live in a world that has been, in the United States, a white supremacy culture, meaning that we have um, white supremacy over our black and brown community members in such a way that we have had power because those in power were white. And we have been trying to change that. And it is hard work, and the county is taking that very seriously. They are working very hard on that. Um, and this is one of those ways of doing that. We have to make these changes. We are better than that. We are all human beings. And so when diversity includes not just race, but includes age, gender, physical ability, we are looking at the diversity of our community. As a government, we need to serve everyone in our county. That does not matter what their experiences are, where they live, their national origins, this list, is just a simple list, and yet it allows anyone in our county to go, my government is going to serve me. And when we're talking about employee definitions here, it means anyone can come to the county and go, I can work here because I am part of this community. And so it is incredibly important that we do this, that we continue to do this work. And I'm looking forward to diving in and trying to do some more, but um, at this point, I will not be supporting this amendment because it takes the very intentionality of the words that were chosen in these three definitions out um, and whitewashes them. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I concur and will also be asking for a no vote. All those in favor of adopting Council Amendment Number 5, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. 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 The motion is not adopted. That brings us to our final amendment before us. We have Council Amendment Number 6 before us. Councilor Coover for a motion. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to move Amendment Number 6 on 2023-39. It's been probably moved and seconded that we adopt Council Amendment Number 6. Ms. Long. Thank you. This would add an additional subsection to the new uh, DEI chapter under 010 policy. So it would add an item E. Um, to read as follows, Pierce County values the individuality and differences of its employees and will not require participation in work-related activities and trainings that employees consider to be offensive or contrary to their conscience, personal values, or beliefs. Thank you. Remarks? Customer Coover. Thank you, Chair. I, I put this in to reiterate that so that folks understand they do have a constitutional right to their right of conscience. And... Uh, we seem to be very focused on EEOC um, noticing, but we're very lax on this. And so for equality, to share that this is equally important, that it be stated so that it is a reminder. And what really put it to the forefront is I have taken some classes that I have found offensive and uh, not, yeah, I'll leave it with that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I'd respectfully ask for a no vote here. Um, every workplace has standards of conduct that employers are um, duly allowed to expect of their employees um, and to ad adhere to those standards. Um, uh, and uh, that is the right of the employer. Um, 
to ensure appropriate training happens um, uh, in the workplace so that everyone can do their jobs safely and at the uh, standard that is expected of every employee. So that standard and consistency is, is uh, normal and commonplace, um, certainly in every workplace I've, I've been in. Um, and uh, this has a strong potential to uh, eliminate the ability for standards across the board um, for what we expect of our employees, which the employer has the full right to do. The motion is on adoption of Council Amendment 6. All those in favor of adopting Council Amendment number 6, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. 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 The motion is not adopted. Ms. Long, are there any other amendments for Council? There are not. Thank you. There's no other amendments. Um, we have 2023-39 in front of us as amended. Are there any other questions or comments by council members before we open this up for a public hearing? Council Member Morrell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it was brought up and just in the recent going through these amendments, and this is probably to uh, Director Archer. <coughs> HR has nothing in our procurement or contracting that demands that anyone who contracts with a county have a D and I policy, to your knowledge? You're correct. No, we do not. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, Mr. Kruver, I'm going to grant some leniency for further comments or questions. Councilman Kruver? No, I just okay. forgot. He distracted me. Okay, I don't see any other hands. We're going to open this up for a public hearing. We're going to begin first, excuse me, <coughs> of Vice Chair Campbell. Did, Council Member Kruver, did you want to say something? No, I had a question for, for the director, but I, I was listening to Council Member Morrell and then I. Um, um, our um, person in the booth is reminding me we didn't have the uh, microphone on. I want to make sure folks are able to follow along, especially those at home. Councilmember Coover may have further questions. Uh, any member may have further questions after we listen to the public hearing, um, and it will come back to council after the public hearing for further council comments and questions. So that will be fully appropriate at that time. So this is a public hearing on 2023-39. We're going to invite members in chambers who have signed up first to come to the podium. We ask you to state your name for the record. You have three minutes to make your remarks. There'll be a timer on the screen to your right. We ask you to keep your comments focused and respectful and on topic and focused uh, to the address to the chair. Again, we're going to begin with those who have signed up. We'll begin with Steve McCoy, followed by Terry McCoy. Welcome and thank you for being with us. Sorry? I said welcome and thank you for being with us. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Steve McCoy, council chair, council members. Um, Pierce County Code section 245 states no ordinance shall contain more than one subject. This certainly seems to contain many subjects unless you view the ordinance under the single action of rejecting our individual rights. Those protected in our state and federal constitution, this ordinance is the attempt to adopt a new set of values as, as taught by critical theory doctrine labeled diversity, equity, and inclusion. Essentially, this is the adoption of the values and doctrines of a new religion. The policy is beyond the jurisdiction granted to you in governing our county. Your jurisdiction is to protect our individual rights, one of which is to the right to our own personal beliefs, of which you have no jurisdiction. You cannot manage how people feel. You can't manage what people believe. That is simply common sense. If only we could pass a common sense ordinance, but that can't be managed either. What we believe is an individual right. <laughs> Our government is designed to protect individual rights, him and her individual rights. We are individuals. We are not them or their. Good management and good government treats people with equality creating the environment in which people have the opportunity to become diverse and inclusive. That cannot be managed. This ordinance is the attempts to force the ideology and doctrines of a religion onto we the people of Pierce County, male and female, him and her. This is our county, 
our home. You have been elected to protect the values we cherish, not to radically transform the way we live by embracing a new religion. I respectfully ask you to, to decline and reject this. Thank you. We have Terry McCoy followed by B. Christofferson. Hi, you know I'm Terry McCoy because you just introduced me. <laughs> um, I ask you to please vote no on this ordinance. And as I read the ordinance, there are a few points that make sense, like updating the vocabulary to include email as a means of communication. However, as I read and reread parts, um, there seemed to be a clarity in regards to adding or deleting or making changes that legally require enforcement of DEI. I ask you to please protect our freedom of speech, conscience, and religion. Why are you wanting to change the definition of personhood from male, he, and female, she, to gender neutral language? DEI does not reflect freedom or liberty. It perpetuates confusion, division, and chaos in academics, social media, businesses, nonprofits, and more. And I've, I've witnessed that, and I've experienced some of that. What happens is just the opposite of what um, DEI proponents are trying to achieve. What is the advantage of changing the language? Who benefits and who doesn't in the scheme of equity? Does changing to gender neutral language create a new culture and new mandates that are contrary to what the majority of Americans in our county individually embrace? I believe all people are to be respected in the workplace, at sports events, the grocery store, wherever people are respect one another. This new policy language of gender neutral pronouns is being used in part as a possible political weaponization of labels. There is a difference between respecting one another even if we hold different beliefs and coercing, forcing, or celebrating by law someone to speak or act in ways that val violate their freedom of speech, freedom of conscience, or freedom of religion. I personally believe in God, but I would never want anyone to be forced or coerced into that same belief or for them to be forced to celebrate what I believe in God. DEI introduces dangerous ground whoops, in ideology. No matter the conversation about DEI, I most often feel like the shell game is being played. Lenny Wilkins, a Seattle icon, NBA superstar, and on and on and on. He says, the American dream, to me, means having the opportunity to achieve, because I don't think you should be guaranteed anything other than opportunity. Please vote no on this ordinance. Thanks. Thank you. B. Christofferson, followed by Ken Polson. B. L. Christofferson, thank you for letting me speak today. This really boils down to equality versus equity. Equality is a part of our Constitution and our way of life. It is merit-based. Equality means equal opportunity. Different people have different motivations for what they want as an opportunity. Some people want a little opportunity, some people want a lot, but it's opportunity equally given to everyone who wants to take advantage of it. Equity is equal outcomes. You cannot control people's equal outcomes. That's what communism and Marxism is all about. Equal outcomes does not consider the rights of the individual. Let me talk about uh, equalizing employment, uh, basing on uh, equalizing group outcomes. It is unequal treatment for one group with a motive of um, replacing the motive of replacing the equity of another group. Everyone has individual rights. When you talk about the language, you're replacing he and she with they and them. They and them is plural. He and she is singular. Every single time you replace it in here, you're talking about an individual person. They and them is incorrect. It's plural. If you look in the dictionary, you'll see the difference between singular and plural. When you look at the Constitution, it says they because they're talking about the people. They're talking about a lot of plural in that. They're not talking about an individual. Here, they're talking about an individual. If you want to replace he or she, and in common language, we say he 
or she. This has a slash in it. We don't go around saying he, she. We say he, uh, what is appropriate, or she. So it is common language to have it written this way. The slash just means either or that you're using, not both of them all the time. Um, if you want to replace it with something gender neutral, you could say the person, the individual. You don't have to say a the, them, a new made up thing that's plural. And that is to uh, help one group, one class, where you're not helping another group or another class. You're picking and choosing which groups you want to protect, defend, and be excited about. In here, it talks about how uh, Pierce County embraces and celebrates the unique experiences, perspectives, and cultural backgrounds each employee brings. But you don't expect respect the unique experience when you don't want to uh, vote yes for the amendment that says that employees um, that em and will not require participation in work-related activities and trainings that employees consider to be offensive or contrary to their conscience, their personal values, or their beliefs. But over here, you say you embrace and celebrate their unique experiences and beliefs. Thank you. A lot of contradictions. Thank you for being with us. Ken Paulson, and then I'll see if there's anybody else in chambers wishing to provide comment. Ken Paulson. Um, I'm not as eloquent as these other speakers. They did really good. But I have a story, and I'll relate it to this. Uh, my son told me that his sister, 16 years ago, told him, don't have your child go to the public school system. She was a teacher, a pull-out special education teacher. She was ahead of her time. 16 years ago, she knew it was dumb to have your kid in public schools. I think that's a fair statement when they groom kids and so forth and so on. So today, most likely you're going to pass, because this is a leftist thing, something that's going to have consequences that maybe the left knows, but uh, the rest of us don't know. It's a march towards stupidity, quite frankly. I get more blunt the older I get. So that's what this is, march towards stupidity. Thank you. We're going to now open up to other members of the public and chambers wishing to provide comment on this ordinance. We'll invite you to the podium to state your name for the record. Is there anybody else in chambers? Please come to the podium, state your name for the record. You'll have three minutes to make your comments. Good afternoon. I'm Valerie Hartwell. I've been here before. Um, I uh, didn't really come prepared, but I'm going to speak from my heart. Um, one of the first uh, speakers talked about common sense. Uh, another one talked about uh, they, them, uh, that is plural, versus he or she, that is singular. Um, Common sense would tell you, especially for the children that are being indoctrinated into this uh, gender neutral uh, ling lingo, um, if you have a young child that is uh, accosted in school, be it being bullied or raped or whatever happens, and, and they're conditioned and indoctrinated into saying they or them, and you go to them to talk to them to ask them, who did this to you? They. They who? Them. Them who? So then you have to get narrow it down to say he did or she did. This is ridiculous what you're doing. You need to think outside of this uh, ultra liberal uh, mindset that you're, uh, enfor you're, you're enforcing and forcing upon the people. And, um, and then I take uh, offense uh, to a comment that was made. Uh, by one of the members here, calling it white supremacy. Uh, not just myself, I'm white, I'm part, I'm Spanish, I'm, I'm multicultural. And, and so to start to continually repeat white supremacy, you are continuing to cause division in our, in our county, in our state, and in the country. Many people that are multiracial take offense to that, and I think it's deadly wrong to be continually uh, repeating white supremacy. And um, 
I had one last thing that I said that uh, when I was here a couple of weeks ago, uh, another comment was made uh, by a member here that uh, when this was drafted, that many, many, many people, you know, spent hours, days, months, I, I assume even a year or two to draft this ordinance. And then you guys spend all this time to draft this ordinance, and then you want to just throw it, dump it out on us, on the public, on your constituents here in Pierce County, and not give them ample time to even know about this ordinance, uh, uh, to, to even come up here to respond to it. I think that's highly unfair. Highly unfair, and, and it should be illegal. I think I would ask uh, Mr. Uh, the Executive uh, uh, Bruce Dammeyer, to look at this and all of you members to draft something to where this can't be done again, where you just, you know, meet for, for months and, and, and a couple of years to draft this and then throw this on us, when I'll bet you if you take the consensus of the people in Pierce County, they don't even know that this is being voted on right now. And that is totally unfair to your constituents. And I ask you, I implore you, by, by the name of God, that you vote no on this for our children. Thank you. Anyone else in chambers wishing to provide comment? Anyone else in chambers? We're going to ask you to come to the podium. State your name for the record. You'll have three minutes. Watch your step. My name is Jeff Horning. Um, I've never done this before. I have no idea what, what's going on here except the, what I've learned about uh, equity and the in inclusion. If, I break my, if my speech breaks up, I'm sorry. I, I, I lose it. But the thing that I'm seeing is not something that you guys have come up in three years. This has been going on for since 2017 and earlier. This is worldly. It's against God's word. It's against what's truth and God's plan for us as man and woman. I see the lies. I see the world turning that way. And I see you guys falling into it. The words you use, the things we say, will be held against us. We should submit to Christ. God is the leader of our life if we want it to be. But we have to submit to him. And you're not doing that. When you listen to this stuff and you're going by the world and the money and the, everything out there that they put out to make this work, you guys are saying you did it in the last three years. No, this has been going on since the day of Adam and Eve. This is Satan. And you guys are walking with it and thinking it's good. I say stand for Christ, submit to him, submit to God, and don't go along with this crap. Thank you. Anyone else in chambers? Uh, can you hear me? We can. OK. Um, Please state your name for the record. Edward Thomas. Thank you. So I understand, and I'm talking about the um, chapters 3.08 and 3.18. Um, I understand that a lot of this is about just amending some of the verbiage used in our code. But I look at those, and I kind of have to speak about them. I, I understand the impetus to try and be inclusive, to help people out, show respect and kindness. But I also have to speak out as someone who's kind of felt the lash of DEI before when it's been I'll say, applied very uh, maliciously. Anytime DEI has been implemented, well, virtually most of the time, regardless of the intent, it tends to be white people, and especially men, who fall further into unemployment, poverty, drugs, and death. Um, I mean, in 2022 by the CDC, men were 80% of the 50,000 suicides in the, in the country. Uh, white men, who are 30% of the population, were 60% of the suicides in the country. Um, Drug overdoses, especially from fentanyl, have tripled in, ever since 2020. And um, whites tend to be about two times the suicide rate of um, other ethnicities in the country. All this is happening within the environment of rapidly growing immigration for essentially all jobs at all levels um, 
in the state, especially in Washington state, because you have a lot of corporate and civil apparatuses who are pushing for more immigration. Uh, you have tech companies and H-1B with, uh, you have tech companies um, really going hard with H-1B visas to bring in more people. Um, and you have just regular immigration bringing in people to take in, to take up blue collar and uh, skilled labor jobs. So, I mean, DEI is essentially, I wanna say, it, it, it's not the broad definitions, it's who interprets them. Uh, and in corporate America, especially tech, they also adopted broad definitions. I lived under those broad definitions when I was uh, working at Microsoft for about 36 months. And in practice, it led to exclusion at many levels and to many degrees of men and whites and born citizens. Um, if we look at other parties for precedent, then that's the precedent that we're gonna find in virtually all cases that have been adopted by other uh, political entities, other corporations, and, uh, and schools that have used DEI in the past. I'm not necessarily trying to be exclusive of other ethnicities, I'm just saying that when it has happened, it's, it's, just, it, it's led to some people benefiting and other people being detrimented a lot. And that's all I have to say. Thank you for being with us. Are there other members of the public? Please state your name for the record and you'll have three minutes. Yeah, hi, my name is Tim Dross. I'm uh, very happy to be here to speak against this uh, proposal. Um, the thing that I'm looking at of, of what I've heard here tonight, I agree with it all. Uh, this is a, um, a poor choice to move forward in this direction. One thing that hasn't been addressed from the public that has been spoken about earlier is the cost is to the, the, the citizens of this area. I'm retired. There's a, there's a lot of people that have uh, very high expenses in taxes, property taxes, everything else that pays your wages and, and everything else in this, this, this county. Now, uh, to impose something on this that will in, increase those costs against the beliefs and against the principles of what we stand for out there is wrong. I, I truly hope that you will look at that and see the condition of the people out in the, in the, in the public. They are hurting. Food costs, gas costs, housing co co costs is amazing. Please work and, and change this to stop it. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think everybody in chambers has had an opportunity to provide comments, so Mr. Weinsbury will move to the Zoom room. Yes, for any member of the public wishing to provide comment on proposal number 2023-39, press the raise hand icon in Zoom or star nine on your telephone keypad. And we have five hands up, Chair. First hand is John Leslie. Please state your name for the record. Oh, there we go. Yes, my name is John Wesley. I'm a lifelong resident of Pierce County. Can you hear me? We can. Please proceed. All right. So I'm going to testify in opposition of 2023-39, specifically to Section 3.18 and all the grammar revisions. What I'd like to testify to today is objective truth. Objective truth is unchanging. It was true yesterday, today, and tomorrow. On the other hand, subjective truth is a bit of an oxymoron. It's really not truth, it's just an opinion because it's continually changing with people's opinions and the, the winds of, the, of today. Um, so specifically in regard to this um, the objective truth is that a man is a man and a woman is a woman. That is an objective truth. And there's simply no mechanism to change our chromosomes. Um, some people can believe that, but there again, that's just a subjective truth. And this ordinance caters to that. Um, gender dysphoria is a mental illness. And it or any other mental illness shouldn't be the guiding principle that this or any other legislation revolves around. Additionally, there's no metric to measure the success or failures of any of these policies. 
Um, they're all subjective. They're a moving target. So there is no way to assess whether these things are successful or not because they'll always be changing. Also, you're asking all of the citizens of Pierce County to participate in this charade. And frankly, I think that people are getting pretty weary of having this forced upon them. So I ask you to consider whether this ordinance contains objective truth or subjective truth that's going to change with the wind. Uh, I urge you no vote. Thank you. Next, please. All right, next hand we have is Olga. Please state your name for the record. My name is Olga Vidubna, and I'm a resident of Pierce County. And I want to say no to this amendment. The reason is because I'm representing uh, the Slavic population and actually the uh, whole people uh, as, uh, who are speaking the different languages or uh, uh, as a second language. So I've been in the United States 15 years. But when I hear that what you're going to change with the pronouns and with uh, uh, how you do that, it means for me as a person as a uh, second language and what I'm feeling that you're exactly the pointing to the specific uh, group of people. Because, you, and you know that uh, United States is built on immigration. The people continue to migrate. Right now, the thousand two Ukrainians and thousand people came to United States. And just imagine, they do not speak English very well. They know exactly the right boundaries, like he or she. And right now, you're trying to uh, uh, break those boundaries, and you're trying to... Uh, exactly emphasize the specific group that it's, that it's not equal opportunity to everyone. This is what I've been hearing. Another what I want to underline that I'm a nurse and I'm feeling so bad when I see we do have a, in our charting that uh, we have the parents, they do have an option to choose uh, the gender for a baby. It's a horrible part. You cannot imagine how I'm crying when I see born male, but the mom wants to be him female. You cannot imagine how that person is going to feel later when he's going to be 15, 16, and when they're from the beginning, they, they treat him as a female. Do you understand that? Just imagine that person, what he's going to be in a, after the 10, 15 years, how the whole personality is going to be broken. So this is my, I totally against about that. And I'm representing the whole Slavic community that we are all churches and we're going to write it down that we are against that. I'm done. Thank you. Um, next, we have last name heard. Uh, please state your name for the record. Hello, I'm Terry Heard, Mr. Chairman, County Council members. I've had 60 plus years of dealing with what I would call the progression of political correctness to this walk political content that we have nowadays, this push towards socialism. It's been very sad to deal with people who felt they had the right to stand up there and say, though they were born male and female, you couldn't address them as male and female. Well, I'm not the problem. They have an issue, and it should not be forced upon us to constantly feel bad about somebody saying we shouldn't be doing that. Now, I've heard of a number of amendments that were passed over or put aside on this, I'm going to say, contentious issue. It should not be one that's brought up and passed on in a single meeting, because this has been the problem we've had with our society, is a group of people come together, the squeaky wheel, get a group of people to back that squeaky wheel issue that they want, 
and put together some type of a law ordinance that promotes that and then you have a number of other people usually not elected that take that banner and run with it and then try to say that we are the problem i'm not a white supremacist i never was i was raised to love everybody in the christian environment to say that is extremely offensive because just because we happen to have been the larger group of ethnic people that were involved in it doesn't mean we were being or persecuting other ethnic groups. We have tried through the years to look at it and bring all ethnic groups forward to support the individual religious beliefs of people that they have, their beliefs in God and however they put it, and there are many ways that this protected. So this effort of he, she, them, their, I was always in trouble for saying their, T-H-E-I-R, because they said that's not correct. And again, this is another way of bringing inconsistency or confusion into our society where none existed prior to that, except for some well-educated people in power that wanted to change it to how they felt. Please consider voting no on this amendment as you're not achieving the goal that you're stating. Simplify your ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next we have Vince. Please state your name for the record. My name is Vince Navarre. And uh, uh, thank you, um, Council and um, Chairperson. Um, my concern is I heard the Executive Dan Meyer speak a couple weeks ago about the priorities of what concerning the citizens of Pierce County. And by far, the number one thing was crime. Number two was packaged with the drugs, fentanyl, mental illness, and homelessness. Those are indeed big fires on, 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 in the home front, which require a lot of attention and resources. I feel like we are not prioritizing the needs of the people of, of Pierce County and the situation. It's kind of like a fire burning in your basement and uh, it will rapidly burn your house down However, you're more concerned with holes in your screens that are an issue, but not near to the priority level of the fire in the basement, which is what I'm calling crime, fentanyl, mental illness, and homelessness. I take extreme offense being a person of color and the woman, councilwoman that uh, popped off with the white supremacy comment. Uh, it is a religious indoctrination that has encouraged that attitude and statement. We have anti-discrimination laws in this country and in this state, and we are not to discriminate to anyone, positively or negatively based on color and other immutable co context. By making white supremacy statements and the uh, resulting um, equity issues, we are being discriminatory. This is a religion, I Ibram X. Kendi, Robin DiAngelo has put it, that white people are racist and you can't, you can't escape it, that the current uh, discrimination has to be handled by, or past discrimination by current discrimination. It is a destructive uh, situation um, that is brewing. This is a religion, it has nomenclature, language, followers, and it's an ongoing, never-ending effort, this anti-racism stuff. It is a religion. So you have taken on a religion that is actually destructive. It's, un it's an unproductive industry, and we should not be funding that. Uh, and we need, to put, we need to take care of our priorities because people are dying. Thank you. All right, next we have Eddie Hamilton. Please state your name for the record. 
Hi, thank you. Uh, name's Eddie Hamilton, and I live in Graham. I, I, I add to the eloquence that has been spoken by the public to the, to the council today. And I, though I have heard the reasoning and the explanations uh, from the county staff, the human resources, and the county uh, council here, uh, I, I have to strongly, strongly disagree. You're, you're either acting out of ignorance or you're being deceptive. And the people of Pierce County are not deceptive. We understand, I'm, I'm sorry, the people of Pierce County are not ignorant. We understand when the long game is being played here and we reject it in total. And through us, may God have the victory. Thank you, vote no. All right, next we have uh, Lynn B. State your name for the record. Lynn B. My name is Lynette Borcherding. And I counted the comments have, that have been made on this ordinance online. And if my count is correct, there are 124 comments. Every one of them are against this ordinance. I would like to remind you that you were elected to, to represent the people of Pierce County. The people have spoken and they do not want this passed. Thank you. Thank you. And at this time, we have another answer. Thank you. Seeing no further hands, uh, we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the council. Are there final remarks by council members? We'll begin with Vice Chair Campbell. Uh, first off, I did have a question following up on this, uh, if I could, for uh, Ms. Archer, um, there was a concern about the cost of this. Was a fiscal note prepared for this? And uh, could you summarize that? There was no physical note created because there was no additional cost envisioned in this ordinance. That it would be uh, uh, no, no cost or de minimis to implement this. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, and that's because, and this is, internal document. This isn't anything that is um, external to, this is how we uh, work within human resources within our employees, correct? It's not external. Yeah. I, I would say the only place where it has external impacts is customers coming in to our public facing offices should have a level of respect for our employees consistent with this. Um, it allows a supervisor to be able to work with a customer to make sure that they are treating our employees in a, in a respectful way. Okay. Thank you. i just make a few, few comments. Hey, I want to thank people for their work on this. I think it gets a bit lost of what all is being looked at here because this is actually very comprehensively uh, to what we're working on within human resources. We kind of truncated for time, but I will read the title because this is an ordinance of the Pierce County Council relating to Title III of the Pierce County Council, including personnel, definitions, code of ethics update, whistleblower protections, workplace safety and violence prevention, classification plan, personal personnel board of appeals, working conditions for our employees, sick leave, humanitarian catastrophic sick leave, shared sick leave program. Uh, vacation leave, leave of absence with pay, leave of absence without pay, military service and how that Im impacts our employees, 
reimbursement of expenses, domestic partnership benefits, uh, equal employment opportunity, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, are among the many things. So this is not a single focus. Uh, I want to thank Executive Dan Meyer for his work on this and uh, sending this up to us uh, for adoption, and uh, I will be voting in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Campbell. Other, fi other final remarks? Councilmember Kruber. Thank you, Chair, and if I may, I had a couple of questions too for Director Archer in Certainly. that. Would it be correct to assume that there will be applications made for grants to pay for programs that are for implementing the, the DEI policies? I don't anticipate that. We very rarely apply for grants to support what we do, at least in the HR department. Okay, so, but, but the organizations that are contracted with to provide training, that, is that out of your general fund? Not, it comes out of our budget Okay. And some and some of the training is done internally by our trainers. And I was wondering if in the, the legislation it was speaking about um, the empowering and, and respecting groups. Was that referring to the organizations that meet like at lunchtime? I believe there are three that have um, um, grouped together. I'm trying to remember what the program was. The employee I'm resource sorry. groups. Yes, that. Employee resource groups, Director Archer. Um, are, are they being? I'm sorry. I, I, there is nothing that is written in that document you have in front of you that is specifically written for or against employee resource groups. Okay. We do have employee resource groups, but they that document is not customized for that. Okay. As I take a deep dive, I'll I'll uh, visit with you later. Thank you for that. Appreciate your time. Uh, just my final words, I've said plenty already tonight, but I, I'm just kind of concerned when I see things creeping. I remember when adult magazines were behind the counter and then they were in front and then they got a brown bag and then now it's like all over the TV. So you see mission creep of, of ideas and things on how they move. And I, I'm, I'm just not at all in favor of anything that is encompassing diversity, equity, and inclusion policies the way I see them being implemented across the country. And for me, that's a poison pill. The rest of the part of, of the ordinance is pieces together, is all of the things that Council Member Campbell said. However, you know, the, when you put the pot in the brownies, I'm not gonna eat it. So that's what I see has happened here. I don't wanna subject the employees. I have spoken to those who are afraid to speak out because their managers, are very into the DEI objectives, and um, it's not pleasant for them. So in representation of my district and in favor of supporting employees, I, I will be a no vote based on the section, and it's not that I don't appreciate your heart and your time and all the work of those who put into this. Uh, I, I just don't think there was enough consideration from the other side of the aisle of ideology. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Are there other final remarks? Councilmember Denson. Thank you, Chair. Um, I don't have a whole lot to add as in addition to what's been said today, but I, I can hear all of the concern. I've read all of the emails that have come across my, my desk today and then the past days, and I haven't had a chance to respond to all of them, but but I try to, especially if I see people that are that are in District 7, and, and I know my other council members do the same for their districts. Um, I'm concerned that, that, that I know that people that are reaching out are truly concerned and are, are nervous and are anxious and are believing that, that this bill is, is doing something that's gonna have a big impact on their lives or others' lives and, and is gonna have a big impact. I don't, I don't feel that a lot of that or, or any of that is, is warranted. This is a bill that's been brought by our professional human resources staff. It was approved by our executive. It's been vetted by citizens groups as well as our labor organizations, other directors, people that work with county staff all of the time. It's gone through committees. 
it's been out there in the public. I know sometimes it's hard to, to follow things at the county. I have a hard time. I'm always emailing staff. Can you just email it to me? Because otherwise, finding it um, in the depths of our website it is not always easy. To me, this is an effort, obviously, to, to clean up some things in the code and apply and apply um, the laws fairly. But it's it's really about, or some of it, is about. Um, Encouraging open-mindedness, encouraging sensitivity and thoughtfulness to others, looking at, at viewpoints that are different than ours and making sure that we're, we're looking at, at all lenses and, and, and being able to relate to folks that, that in the most sensitive and thoughtful ways possible. You know, their mistakes are going to be made, but, but how we make those and how we, how we deal with, with our colleagues professionally or our customers. Um, in the end of the day, it's, it's, it's a growth experience for us all, and it's really, really important in our efforts to be welcoming to one another at the county, as well as to be welcoming and inclusive of everyone in our community. I don't understand the comments about it being a religion. Um, I haven't heard that one before. It's not a religion. It's, it's all about us trying to grow as people and grow as an organization to be to be more inclusive. I am 100% in support of diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives. I've seen them work really positively in organizations that I'm part of, in school districts that, that I think are really doing it right. This is new, this is different, and, and I understand that it's scary for some, but I think that you will find that this is not going to have the dire consequences that, that you're worried about. Come talk to us if, if you're seeing things that are concerning to you so that we can work through those issues, those real issues. Um, and, and that will help us partner with you to make sure that it has the intended objectives, which is just to make the county um, a better place for all of us to live. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Morrell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, like others, uh, council members have, have said, I appreciate the dialogue that's taken place. Um, that's kind of what we attempt to do, is try to involve individuals in uh, just the civics of, the, of their government and uh, to be able to debate issues that some are very passionate about. and. Uh, you know, then taking everything we have and in, in, in making, you know, those decisions that we have to make as elected officials. You know, I, I've got four kids and I got seven grandkids now. And the use of vocabulary that my kids and my grandkids use caused me to kind of stop in my tracks and uh, and cringe at times uh, because what I was raised with what was a word a sentence doesn't mean the same to them uh, nowadays. Case in point, we were talking the other week and I was talking about a vacation and it was going to be out of pocket. And for me, out of pocket means it's going to cost you something. To them, my younger ones, um, it meant, Grandpa, how, how come you're going to be out of control and chaotic? That's what it meant to them. Now, I ask my older kids, um, which are millennials, and they <laughs> said that phrase, when it's used in the office, means you're going to be unavailable for a period of time. I'm going, well, hold it here. I don't get it. And, and they took me through this journey that there's actually a cringe quiz <laughs> that you could take for Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Zs, where their vocabulary is totally different than what we're, I'm used to using. And I always say, okay, I'm open to change. Um, and there again, uh, this is my explanation on 
what out of pocket is, but it, it was interesting. Um, if you want to go to the Wall Street Journal and pull up the cringe quiz, uh, you could do that and try to understand what this <laughs> new generation, uh, their speak language is, is like. You know, they've been raised with a lot of devices that I never had uh, growing up. And uh, so, um, you know, I, I kind of had to sit back a little bit and uh, take that to heart that what I say may not carry the same impact as what someone else uh, thinks of my comments. And I, I have to be sensitive about that. You know, I fall into the group of the old white guy. And, um, you know, so I'm a boomer too. And so, you know, I, I have to humble myself sometimes and, and try to see it through a different lens. Government is a little bit different. I've had a company here, multiple companies in Pierce County for 42 years. My policies aren't going to be the same as government's. Government has to be, as we've known, all inclusive. Um, every grant, every federal fund we get, there's a caveat to it. We cannot discriminate. And even within this DNI inclusion policy, it starts out item A. Pierce County embraces diversity of all facets, including, but not limited to age, gen gender, ethnicity, gender identity, expression, language, differences, nationalities, national origins, family, marital status, physical, mental development abilities, race, religion, or the belief of sexual orientation, skin color, social and economic classes. That pretty much covers everyone that I know out there. And, and that's it. To be inclusive, we, we are a little bit different. Uh, as a government agency. The direction that we set as a council uh, happened uh, back in 2020, 2020, I think, with resolution number 43, asking the executive to go through all the departments um, and to look at review policies, procedures, and best practices within our county to make sure we didn't have any embedded biases within any of our codes. That was the start of the journey that we are now at right now. Uh, there's been multiple resolutions. Uh, there's been committees that have brought forward uh, these languages and every one of these council members had people appointed to those committees. I myself had two from District 1. And so to say this is new, this just came up, uh, you know, uh, that's really not true. A anyone on this council and uh, anyone on that committee knew that this was a long journey. Um, and uh, so, when I look at this, you know, I, I, I don't see um, a lot of the things that I'm, I'm hearing within this, this language. Um, I don't see that it, it supports one group and not another group. I don't see it excludes any individuals. Um, I, I think there again, as we move forward as government, uh, we have to be more inclusive because as someone who grew up four blocks from here as a teenager uh, in Tacoma, um, you know, I knew racism it happened both ways. I knew I didn't go out into Wright's Park at night. I didn't know I, I couldn't go on to MLK Way at night. 
And uh, so what I would like to see through all this is to keep the discussions going, to keep somewhat of an open mind, and to just see how policies like that, this in government, are effective in work and makes more of a, um, a welcoming uh, employment area with these Gen X, Z people, individuals, and the, you know, millennials and the boomers and, you know, that we can work together uh, on trying to make Pierce County the best county that we can. So with, with that, uh, I think, you know, th those are my comments, uh, the questions that I asked um, through this whole process have been answered. I, I appreciate the hard work that has gone into this because you're right, it is a change in how we do things. It is an update of our guidelines and our policies, which we requested three years ago. And sometimes, you know, you get what you ask for. And I appreciate the executive's uh, direction on having HR uh, dive into their policies and come up with uh, this uh, document that is all encompassing to all of the county guidelines and ordinances that we have within our uh, HR division. So uh, I am comfortable moving forward with this. I don't see necessarily a downside to it. Um, you know, I, I may look at it from a different lens uh, than, than others out there. But it was, it's definitely been an education and a process for me to go through this whole uh, challenging time for the last three years. And uh, um, I think that there again, this is new. It is a movement that we, you know, some ground that we haven't uh, entered into. But I, I don't think this is uh, something that's just going to take us to the bottom uh, real quick. So um, I appreciate there again the work of staff on this, uh, the multiple questions. Um, I appreciate the council members' comments, their passions, um, and uh, some kind of you know, got me a little riled, but I'll let that go. And uh, so with that, Mr. Chair, I will uh, close my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Morrell. Any other remarks? I've let you speak once already, Councilmember Kruver. The starting date that correct the statement. Councilmember Thank you, Chair. I, I just wanted to correct this. Actually, it was more like 2018, I believe, when the executive announced implementing the DEI initiative. And so there was work done prior to the 2020. Thank you. Thank you. Any other final remarks? Well, I'll close um, by thanking my colleagues for a very civil uh, debate. Um, you know, we, we take this work really seriously. I did not think the personnel policies for the county were going to generate this m much uh, conversation, um, but uh, here we are. Um, th these are personnel policies that simply work to modernize the workplace in numerous areas of the personnel policies, how we receive communication, how we communicate with each other, how people get approved for leave, all kinds of just normal day-to-day -day things um, to modernize the workplace so we can work more efficiently together. They're really straightforward, clean up personnel matters um, throughout this ordinance uh, happens uh, almost annually. 
um, to update it for modernization and state law changes and so on and so forth. And simply put, how to make a more respectful, inclusive, and welcoming workplace, as numerous members have already spoken to. Um, you know, I'm, I, I, I do need to apologize that folks, uh, folks have a lot of fear and confusion, and I really think led astray with a lot of disinformation about what is in these policies, what it means, and what it doesn't mean. And I sincerely apologize that that kind of fear and confusion um, was caused really unnecessarily. That, that is not good for um, good civil dialogue, for us to not work from the same set of facts. It really concerns me that we don't work from the same set of facts. Um, but uh, he, here, here we are with how uh, almost everything in our lives are being politicized um, and, you know, manufacturing conspiracies theories it's 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 just um a, a real struggle when we're trying to really create a modern respectful um inclusive and milk and welcoming workplace uh here in pierce county that's all we're really trying to do um and i think as previous speakers have said human resources department is working really hard to do that um to recruit a diverse workforce retain a diverse workforce Folks with diverse opinions and diverse backgrounds make us better, they make us stronger, they solve problems better when we have uh, d diverse folks coming to the table to, to work for us and to serve the public. And that's really simply all we're trying to do. Um, there's no hidden agenda here. Um, and I just ask us to continue to have an open mind as Councilmember Morrell uh, is encouraging as well. Um, about what this really uh, is simply about. With that, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll on Ordinance 2023-39? Yes, Councilmember Herrera. Aye. Councilmember Hitchin. Aye. Councilmember Morrell. Aye. Councilmember Campbell. Aye. Councilmember Kruver. Nay. Councilmember Denson. Aye. And Councilmember Mello. Aye. The result of the roll call is five ayes and two nays. On a vote of five ayes and two nays, the ordinance is adopted. That brings us to Section 10, Community Forum. Community Forum is an opportunity for members of the public to address the council on any topic that did not appear on today's agenda. There is a three-minute time limit. We ask you to state your name if you would like it on the record and address all comments to the chair. I don't have a sign-in sheet in front of me, so I'll uh, rely on folks to come to the podium State their name for the record, and again, you'll have three minutes to make your comments. Ken Paulson. Um, I just read that the U.S. Uh, Special Forces landed in Israel. I'm sure that they're going to head and uh, proceed and help Israel to wipe out all the terrorists. And this is where my comment comes, and I'm for that. I think everybody should be. Um, the people that have come over our border illegally, U.S. border, we do know that they are murderers. That's happened. We know that they're rapists. Uh, we know that they bring in TB. Those are all undisputable. Uh, I'm inclined to believe that they are some terrorists and there are undercover military from foreign governments. They're military-aged men. There's, I describe it as a boatload. I mean, that's way more than that. And they're coming in the United States. And apparently, the United States thinks that's good. They believe a lie that that's good. That's a lie. Anybody who believes that's a lie, they're believing a lie. And my thinking is, they believe that lie, they believe a lot of other lies, because they have no discernment. They don't have the ability to look down the road at all. I wonder, what is going to happen when these terrorists, with the U.S. help, are dead over there. 
here. Will those military aged men decide to get in some trucks and start driving around some suburban uh, with guns? Because the criminals have guns. I'll call their guns super guns. They have a stash somewhere. Because believing the lie of having the border wide open, we are like vulnerable. If you don't believe that, don't know what to tell you. I believe they're coming at some point. I don't know when. When I spoke about the highway to adversity, it's going to have flat tires, it's going to have overheating, it's going to have problems. This is going to be one of the problems. It's coming our way. When we hit it, everybody's going to know it. Thank you. Anyone else in chambers wishing to participate in community forum, please come to the podium. State your name for the record. Yeah, he, he reminded me of something. Um, it, just real quick first, though, I do want to say... Uh, for the record, I, your, your name, please. Oh, Bia Christofferson. I'm sorry. It's Bia okay. Christofferson. It helps Denise out a lot to keep track. Yeah, North Tacoma. Um, I do want to say that if my... Um, Figures are right. I think it was in the past year. There have been 30-some known terrorist watch list people coming across the southern border, and those are the ones that came in with groups of people that were turning themselves in. Heaven only knows how many people have gone across the border in places where we haven't con had contact with them. So it's just a thought to keep in your hat. But getting back to Israel, um, you, you know, our councils, whether it's Tacoma City Council or the County Council, make a lot of resolutions to celebrate things, to show your support for things. I think it would be wonderful if this council would have some kind of a resolution to support Israel in this time of need. And, um, and thank you very much for wanting us to have a moment of silence to think about Israel. Um, I heard today that they went into one kibbutz and they had something like 40 infants that were killed and most of them beheaded. And there was, maybe it was another kibbutz where they found 100 bodies dead. Um, and this is worse than ISIS ever was. And we've got a lot of Americans that were over there at that peace concert that have been killed too. So um, I, I would like to um, ask that you have some kind of a resolution in, in support of Israel and for the civilians in, in, both, pa in both Gaza and there. But uh, the people of the government of uh, Gaza are, uh, they have to be defeated and have to be defeated once and for all uh, for everyone's benefit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Terry McCoy, and um, I just want to address comments that um, <laughs> I don't like using this word because I'm not easily offended. Hold the time clock. Um, that I'm confused. I'm believing a conspiracy theory. Um, comments that are similar to that. Um, I do my research really well and thoroughly. I appreciate the research that you folks have done and share. Um, it gives me new things to think about. It gives me um, information that I haven't discovered. And so I appreciate that. But I would encourage y all of us to not make assumptive statements like that. Um, I don't believe I'm confused about DEI. Um, I might have a different opinion. Um, but I have um, the liberty and freedom to have that. And so um, just a word of caution. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in chambers? Let's see, Mr. Winesbury, anybody in the Zoom room wishing to participate in community forum? For any members of the public wish to provide public comment, press the raise hand icon in Zoom or star nine on your telephone keypad. And at this time, we have one hand. Uh, please state your name for the record. Mr. Chairman, I'm Terry Hurd. 
I want to give you some truisms. What we excuse in moderation, our children will excuse in excess. What you put into the ordinances is like a bag of potatoes. Mr. Hurd, we already heard public comment on the ordinance, so this is a time for any items that are not on today's agenda. So please proceed with comments that are not on today's agenda. You pass more than one ordinance, sir. Through the years, you pass many. So, but I will honor that. One of the things I'd like to say, the east-west roads on Canyon Road, where there is a non- major arterial, why can't you have a yellow flashing light so those that were there waiting with no opposing traffic whatsoever may move across it? Thank you. Thank you for your feedback. And at this time, we have no other hands, Chair. Thank you. Um, appreciate the feedback. Uh, Appreciate the thoughts about yielding yellow lights. I think those of uh, members that represent the uh, portion of the county that have roadways like that, I think uh, we definitely have uh, heard that and we'll take that back as we continue to develop our transportation improvement program. It closes community forum um, and we are at section 11, other business and announcements. Is there any other business or announcements by members? Vice Chair Campbell. Uh, I wanted to address something that was brought up by a couple people in public comment, and unfortunately, uh, Ken left. He said that he knew of uh, terrorists or criminals that were coming across the border. Please submit their names to the Sheriff's Department. Um, of anyone that you know of coming over, please um, make sure you can reach out to Sheriff Troyer with that information of what you have. So, thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Campbell, to make sure folks know how to report known criminals. Any other business um, or announcements from members? Not seeing any. Ms. Long, is there any other uh, business or announcements for council this Nothing evening? Nothing today, thank you. Seeing no other business before the Pierce County Council, we are adjourned.